welcome to the Purpose Over Profit podcast with Darren and Chris, where each week we discuss what it takes to live a life of purpose and profit and explore the lives of people trying to achieve just that. Welcome back everyone to the Purpose Over Profit podcast and this week as always I'm joined by my co-host Darren Green. How are you Darren? Yeah really well, really looking forward to this one, someone we both know fairly well. Yep, and on that note, we've got Kyle Murta, who is a public public speaking expert, and he's won many awards. And we've actually I met Kyle probably a couple of years back at a networking event. I was instantly charmed by his charisma, and we since had a meeting in uh, was it actually the Village Hotel from memory mean, actually over a coffee. Yeah, so, yeah, Village yeah. Hotel, I believe. Good old yeah, days. Good old days where you could actually sit and have a coffee. We spoke about stuff, and then. Now I'm looking forward to actually joining one of uh, Kyle's coaching groups as well, which is really exciting as well. Uh, so Kyle, yeah, how are you doing? Fantastic to see you as always. Yeah, I'm great, Chris. Great to be here. Really looking forward to it. Darren, we've run into each other multiple times yeah. as well. So this is like the gangs come together. Really looking forward to it. Fantastic. So Kyle, for our listeners who don't know you, which I'd be surprised that that many don't, how would you like to introduce yourself? I mean, I've mentioned you're a public speaking expert, you've won various awards. I mean, I've got here, I've got some notes that you're the UK and Ireland champion, the Scottish champion times two, and you've got a big ambition really to become the public speaking world champion one day. Is that a good Mm -hmm. introduction? That is a good introduction. I should maybe pay you to come on tour with me and and use that because that's fantastic. I I like to keep it simple, you know, kind of focus on the end result rather than the the title. Basically what I do is I help people stand up and speak with more confidence than they thought they could. That's as simple as it gets. And I do it through helping them through their public speaking, you know, looking at their delivery, how they're using their body language, their voice to project their message, their actual content, the words they're using as well, the structure, the flow, and of course, any visuals. If people like to use slides, I can dive into those too. So it's about helping people be more confident when they have to stand in a high stakes situation. Well, and have you always been, I mean, we're going to touch upon your background and how you've got to this journey, but I mean, as a kid, were you always this kind of confident, outgoing person? No, no, absolutely not. I was probably the the polar opposite. I was, it's quite funny. Um, You know, on Facebook, how you're friends with people you knew about 20 years ago, uh, but you never speak, but you're still friends on Facebook. I think if you ask them, you know, is Kyle a public speaker? Is he good at that? They'd probably say to you, can Kyle speak? I I I truly think that would be their response because I was so shy in school. I really was. I had a lot of, I had a lot of problems uh, with my self-esteem, to be honest with you. I, I suffered with dyslexia, which affected my grades and my, my goals, everything really around me. And I was in a pretty bad place for a while in school, but thankfully I found uh, the world of self-development and I just sort of worked at myself repeatedly for multiple multiple years and slowly but surely I've been able to rise up my confidence. I love that Kyle just in in terms I think you're probably I know the answer from this that you're going to give but I often hear people talking about it's okay for you or it's okay for them because they're a natural public speaker Mm. but I, I, I guess I'm guessing from your response and where you started that you very much value you know the environment and I guess how you've practice that and hone that through personal development than public speaking and confidence is just something you're born with a natural presenter where 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 do you see that I guess yeah look there is some natural presenters out there people who just seem to have that aura about them from the day they come out the womb but uh, there's very few there's very few for most of us we have to work at it and I think it's actually better to work at it because if you're just given these gifts you're not going to value them are you you're not going to really understand the true power of them. But if you've been in a, a bad place where you've got low self-esteem, where you can barely look anyone in the eye, and then you can go to developing yourself where you can speak in front of hundreds of people, that's going to help you so much more. It's going to help you with every challenge in your life, never mind just public speaking, compared to the person who's just given it. It's better to earn it, I believe. And then how does that work? Obviously, you've got the background there where you've talked about in school. I mean, where did you see yourself in school going? Because obviously, I'm guessing from where you are just now to where you were is a very yeah. different period in your life because obviously you've been studying and if you want to bring our listeners up to date in that aspect as well, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, when I was in school, I, I really had no clue at all, Chris. And I think we're kind of, we're told university, right? It's got to be university. That's where you've got to go. So I sort of fell into that way of thinking as well that I needed to get there. Um, and so the focus was just get a decent enough grade so you can get there. And that was a big 
struggle for me because like I mentioned, exams, grades, not things I was good at. I actually failed all of my major exams in the prelim stage and um, before the, you know, the final ones that you do in your like your fifth, your sixth year, your final years. Um, so there was a lot of pressure going into those moments, but thankfully I got good enough results and then I was able to get to Strathclyde University and I picked the most open degree I could pick, psychology, um, and just <laughs> put it out there, you know, no direction at all, just psychology, I'll learn a bit more about the mind and that was me for about four years studying that and I did think for a while, you know, maybe I could be a psychologist, but then I found out that you had to do another four years on top of that just to get starting and i thought no i'm not doing that so uh, that dream sort of died at that point <laughs> and so when, when did you think about in terms of leaving university i guess when you're finishing university when did you decide right public speaking that might be something you know that i could make a career out of because it, it doesn't no one runs a degree in that right? no one no one comes out of no. university say Right, you know, whether it's psychology or economics or, you know, tourism, no one comes out and, you know, goes, oh, that's me qualified. I'm going to go and be a public speaker or public speaking expert. So how did that, how did you transition, I guess, from there? It was a great point. It's a great point, Darren. It really is. And it was in my final year. Things were getting a bit more serious. And I thought, OK, I'm not going to do this psychology thing. What am I going to do when I graduate? And so I started just trying to basically try out a bunch of different things. I worked a few different jobs. I was a, a fundraiser for the WWF, uh, the wildlife charity. I was selling like cuddly toy pandas to Glaswegians on the street. It didn't go well. <laughs> that's a task in itself. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> it is. It's a good it grounding is. for a public speaking expert. If you were, you know, if you were on Socky Hall Street or Buchanan Street, I guess, and someone, you're one of the guys coming up to you to get you signed up for a direct debit, I'd imagine that's quite a good grounding for a for a future public speaking expert looking back yeah looking back and also for just sort of uh getting used to hearing the word no you know <laughs> like pounded upon you about 180 times a day and, and that's the kind yeah. ones kyle i suppose yeah that's the kind ones yeah yeah the other ones you know <laughs> say a few more words alongside that but uh yeah so i did that for a while i was a lifeguard and i was also trying a bunch of different activities just trying to figure out who i was going to be and one of the things I did was I went along to a speakers club, a place where people like practice public speaking together outside of work. And I went along there, no expectations at all. I just watched a few motivational videos before on my laptop. So I thought, why not give this speaking thing a, a go? So I went along and they, what they do at these places is they ask you to do a bit of impromptu speaking. They ask you a question out of the blue, and then you've got to stand up and speak in front of a bunch of people you don't know. And, answer that question in over the space of two minutes. And my first ever question was, Kyle, if a zombie apocalypse happened in Glasgow, where would you go? And I'm thinking, what the, <laughs> you know, I couldn't believe it. But uh, I found myself up there staring at all these blank faces. And then I was only able to say two words in that moment, the pub. And then I sat back down so that was my first ever experience of public speaking. Really pretty awful, you know, I froze to the spot. So when I sat back down, I thought to myself, wow, because I, I was like feeling this sensation in my body, which was very foreign, like a real fear, I guess. And I thought, wow, I need to do something about this. Either I, I avoid this public speaking thing or I go towards it and try to overcome this, this fear I'm feeling. And that was the decision I decided to make to go towards it. And it's the best decision I've ever made. So that was how it truly began for me with uh, the speaking and so forth. And how, how did you make the decision to go towards it? I mean, I, I love that. And I talk, I talk to a lot of my clients around purpose and finding their purpose, but there's something that in what you'd said about trying lots of different stuff, you need to have experience in order to understand what works, what doesn't work. And actually you found something that you had an experience with that didn't go particularly well, I think we could agree. Yes. But yet you chose to go towards it. Was there something in that that made you, I guess, what was the pull to bring you in that as opposed to saying, oh, I'm never doing that again. I'm garbage at it. This will never work. Yeah. Yeah. So I think once we have these moments where we try something and it doesn't work out, there's two reasons, right? It's easier. A, I didn't enjoy that. I can't see myself doing it again. Or it's B, I'm afraid of it. And when you're afraid of it, 
that's often what you need to go towards. And because of my experience of looking into self-development for the eight years previous, I kind of knew that's what I needed to do. So I didn't have ambitions of being a public speaker at that point. I just thought this is something which is going to help me going forward. So that's why I was drawn to it, to, to face it and try to embrace it. That's really interesting. I mean, I've actually watched a couple of your videos and there's one where you talk about fear in one of your videos and the fear of hearing your own voice for the first time or do my eyebrows look like this as well? And it's actually a really comical video, but the way you put that across is like you talk about psychology. So it's all those kind of internal voices that you hear that are holding you back as well. And for yeah. you to, I mean, the first time you talk around your, your first public experience of speaking again, where you do it yourself, we can talk about that in a minute. But I guess that other first time you're just shunted into the world of actually saying two words, mm -hmm. of actually just saying the pub, that must have been quite overwhelming at that point. And to then being able to be brave enough and stand up enough to then decide that that could be something that could be interesting to go down. It's quite courageous in a way, considering your different opportunities in your life at that point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And listen, there was the great thing was that club I went to was lovely. The, the people in there were really supportive. They were all much older than me, but they encouraged me to come back. So that certainly helped um, as well with making that decision, you know. But yeah, you've just got to sort of push yourself into these moments, don't you? I mean, you're never going to be ready for these moments. You've just got to, to face them and work at it. And my goal the next time was to say more than two words. And then the next day it was to say a little bit more and then to finally fill up the two minutes and then maybe do a prepared speech and build it up slowly like that. And after about six months of doing so, I actually started to lose that fear because I was doing it so much. I was looking into it online in my spare time. I became a bit obsessed and I actually started to enjoy my speaking as a result of doing so. And then that's when things really took off um, at that point for me. And when you say you took off, does that mean, because obviously you've got your own business now, at what point during that six month period did you maybe consider starting a business for yourself or was it just more opportunities came up around public speaking? At the six month mark, uh, another opportunity came up. So a lady who was actually in the audience at that wee club offered me a, a job speaking in front of 300 students. Wow. Um, so <laughs> that was a big step up and it was actually at my own university, Strathclyde. So I'm still a student at the time and I'm presenting to first year students on, on public speaking. So this is quite a whirlwind for me, you know, going from saying the two words to now doing this, this lecture um, in front of 300 of my peers. So that was the, the catalyst really, because I, I did that, I prepared for it. I pre prepared for it way too much. I took about a month of just doing it over and over and over and over again. And it, it was robotic by the time I did it, but I did it. And that's the main thing. And after leaving that lecture, that's where I thought, yeah, I, I want to do this. I want to do this as a career. I want to be doing more speaking engagements like this, helping people in audiences. And that's when I started getting a, a few more gigs, a few more gigs. I started competing in public speaking competitions. So by the time I was about to graduate, I had a couple of clients. I had some accolades. I thought, why not go for it? And that's when Confidence by Design was truly launched. And like, it's fantastic. I've, I think I've followed you for at least a couple of years, Kyle, anyway. And obviously, you'll know from our conversations, I've moved into the the business world. I've left the, the, the corporate world yes. behind. But I guess regardless if you're in the corporate world, regardless whether you're a business owner or entrepreneur, what happened in the last year, year and a half and this transition to online and our ability to communicate effectively, I'd imagine your stock and your ability to be able to help people that, that must have grown. Has that had a positive impact, I guess, on, on your business since then? Yes, I've been very fortunate. Um, there are many businesses, as we, as all of us know, have suffered quite a lot, but this has helped me in many ways by going online because I can reach more people now than ever before. And you're right, Darren. I mean, online communication, it's very different. It's very new. And a lot of people need help with that. And something which gave me a bit of a head start was filming the short videos you know, filming the, the short videos. My first one was with just me and my phone in my car. But by having that background of speaking, even just to a phone camera, this camera became a lot more natural um, as well. So yeah, it's been positive overall, just like I know it's been positive for both of you um, as well. So even you consider that journey you've been on, so you've basically been at uni, not really sure you want to do, public speaking event, all of a sudden you're in, thrust into the spotlight, six months down the line, you're considering your own business, you're graduating, you're going back to university. All that's happened so fast. 
yeah. the same time you're qualified, your first degree is a, in psychology. So then you just start to have your own business. Did that then give you the platform having a few clients to become fully comfortable and like you're saying, you're shooting videos on your phone? At what point did you then start to transition into a really focused business? Because obviously I've seen some of the videos where you've got your kind of personal brands changed, where you've had like your t-shirt on, now you've got more shirt and you've got the suit jacket on, so you've got this more kind of public speaking persona, which is fantastic. How long has it been since that journey point? I mean, how many years have your business been going since then? Yeah, I think I think I know the video you're referring to, Chris. I've got like the sort of white T-shirt, the, yeah. the blue suit jacket. I'm going for the, like the, the tech startup sort of look, <laughs> Silicon Valley. Uh, yeah, that one that one died pretty quick. Uh, I'll be completely honest. Business was awful the first year. It, it really was. You know, a lot of people they like to sugarcoat things and say business is all fun and games. It's not. Uh, there were some months in the first year where I was making like zero. And I, this was the thing, right? I just built up all this momentum. I'd got these speaking engagements out of nowhere. I'd won these athletes. I was going in thinking, yes, I'm just going to, I'm going to go to the top here, you know, even quicker. And it didn't happen. So that was a, a real setback. I had to readjust, recalibrate and think about what I was doing because what I was doing was not working. And this is the thing about business. And I'm sure both of you have your own stories and, and perhaps moments like this as well, where you need to change something. And it's just about figuring it out, isn't it? It's about trying things out. Much like I was trying to figure out what I was going to do, I had to figure out how I was going to make this business work as well. So a lot of error for me, a lot of hardship. But once again, you've got to work at it. And if you earn it, it's going to be far more rewarding. So that was my experience, at least in the first year. And then things started to improve just as you adapt to the environment. You know, I mean, Darren, I'm sure when you first entered property and did your first property, you didn't know what you were doing, right? It was quite a, a struggle, I imagine. Chris, I imagine the first marketing experience you had, branding experience with a client, that wasn't plain sailing. But over time, you sort of learn and develop, don't you? I think that's an interesting fact when you bring that up because it's easy to reflect on stuff. You look back and stuff you've done years ago and you can see the errors in your ways and what you'd improve on. I think it's continually evolving and improving. And I think that's why it's so successful around your journey, which you've seen. And even looking behind you, for people who have not watched or not watching this, you should watch this on YouTube because Kyle speaks with his hands and everything else. And he's got a fantastic book behind him around the five pillars, which we can talk about as well. I mean, how how easy was it to refine your business model and bring it into those five pillars, if you like? Because over that transitional period, you must have been mm. picking up bits and bobs from different clients you've been working with to then be able to shape it into your own book. Yes, yes. So the five pillars started out as as uh, workshops, in-person workshops in the Virgin Money Lounge in Glasgow, which we're all familiar with. And of course, the first ones, barely anyone was showing up. Um, but over time, more people started to come along. And through delivering the content there, I started to learn what was working for people, what was not working for people. And also working with clients one-to-one, -one, you know, seeing where they struggled, that helped me a lot in terms of adding content for this book. So eventually I was able to distill it down to the five key skills that you need to be a successful public speaker. And they are body language. Your body language has got to be on point. Your nonverbal communication, voice, right? If you're monotone, you're boring. You're, you're not going to last up here on the stage. You've got to vary your voice. Structure, how you structure a presentation. Clarity, if it's not clear, it's not going to have the desired effect. And then lastly, impact, how you can make a lasting impression which inspires action. So those were the five things which I distilled it down to by the time I was uh, starting writing the book. And how did you see over that period of time? Because there's certainly something I, that resonates hugely in terms of trying to hone your skills as a the thing that you do. So for you, a business, <clears throat> for a public speaker and growing your business. So there's an element of being the best speaker that you can, personal development, honing your skills, but then... The fundamental, you know, piece is about why well, I still need to get paid. I need to put food on the table. And when you're running your own business and you're bringing in nothing, I suppose your focus has to be going, I suppose, closer towards that. So how did you find the balance between that? How did you get that right balance between those two components? Really good question, Darren. And it's it's always something which you're you're sort of juggling, right? Yeah. Working on your skill set and then working on your business because they're two separate things. And I think the, the common mistake we all make, and I've made it in the past, is you think you just need to think about the skills, your skill set, and then business will take care of itself. But no, you need to think about the marketing, the accounts, sales, all of that stuff. So yeah, everything leaned more to that side, 
when things were bad, I have to be honest with you. But I was always doing things to try and challenge myself. The competitions I enter, they inspire me and push me to produce my best work, you know? So stuff like that helped me a lot. Also being around um, other speakers who are professional, we're trying to make a career out of this. They can critique some of my stuff. I have a coach as well. You know, I, I've recently brought on a coach to help me with my speaking. So that's one way I also ensure I'm developing because I've got a long way to go as well. I'm not the, the finished article by any means. And in the business side, well, it's just sort of consuming as much information as possible to figure out how you're going to make this work. And um, so it's always, uh, I, I don't like the, the analogy of balancing, but it's like scales, isn't it? I mean, one goes this way, the other goes up and it kind of keeps going like this. And you try to find that middle point. Absolutely love that, especially when you're saying you've even got your own public speaking coach, because you all need to learn off somebody else to keep on developing. And actually, just interesting me there when you're talking about your public speaking as well, because obviously you listen to actors or singers who then will take sometimes, they'll, they'll try not to speak for a period of time to try and rest their voice. So when you're doing public speaking events, you're entering competitions, do you sometimes have to just sit in silence for a whole day to give your voice a complete rest? Or are you constantly practicing and evolving the voice as you go? Um, I think I've calloused my voice in some ways. <laughs> I don't know if this is a, a good thing, but I used to get quite a, a sore throat when I was practicing early on, but I don't really get that too much now. However, if it if I do get a bit you know choked up or anything like this, something which is absolutely magical is manuka honey. I don't know if you've heard oh, of yeah. that before. Manuka honey in a hot drink, if you like tea, put it in that, coffee, whatever, and um, that works a treat. It, it really does revive your throat in amazing ways. So to be honest with you, Chris, no, I don't do uh, periods of silence to rest my voice. I just let it go and we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, I think it is probably wise to at least warm up your voice before you speak. Um, I see a lot of people do that. That's something I should probably do as well. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, even when you talk in the book, I've also... I see, obviously, you did the one-to-one -one coaching, which is fantastic. You've got, yeah. the group, you've got the group sessions and you've got the team training as well. So you've actually diversified a lot of the stuff you do as well because you can help many people. And obviously, yeah. I love your tagline as well, which you can see, which is en enhance your self-esteem, which is mm. fantastic as well. So you can see that that broadens across many aspects of your business. I mean, I guess for now, where would you see, where do you see yourself going in the future? Because I mean, we're going to talk around purpose and how that plays a role in your life and profit. But where do you see the business growing? Yeah, sure. So my focus right now is on three key areas in my business, team training, one-to-one -one, and the, the membership. And the membership is quite a new thing and a very exciting thing. And the reason I started that was I was doing these workshops, I was doing these webinars, one-off ones, and it was great. You know, people come along, they get inspired, they get fired up and they'd use the stuff, but maybe not six months down the line. So I kind of thought, how can I create a space which is continuous for people so they can continue to develop on a consistent basis to make it a habit? Because if you don't make it a habit, then you're going to lose it. Ultimately, you don't use it, you lose it. So that's what kind of gave birth to the membership. And it's going so well. I want to focus mostly on that. I want to grow multiple membership groups because I feel that's the best way I can help people um, on a consistent basis. And then there's one-to-one -one training as well for specific people. We've got big presentations coming up and team training for organizations who need specific help too. But another direction I want to, to answer your question fully, Chris, I want to take my business in is I want to be doing more keynote speaking. I want to be speaking at, you know, big conferences, big events, creating my own forms of, of speeches, hour slots, two hour slots, et cetera, which uh, could work there. So I see myself, yes, continuing the training, continuing to help people, but also doing keynote speaking in the future on various different topics. Public speaking, communication, always at the heart of it, but maybe some other stuff on confidence um, as well in general. Interesting, Kyle, you mentioned, or Chris mentioned maybe at the start around your ambition, I guess, to be the like world's leading like authority on that or expert on that. How do world you champion, how do you get yeah. to champion? How do you get to that sort of level? Just out of curiosity, is there a is there a you know public speaking Olympics or or, or something that that you're able to go to or an equivalent of that? There is, there is, Darren. There's an Olympics, and um, so every year there's a competition called the World Championship of Public yeah. Speaking. Thirty thousand people enter from all across the world. Um, and basically you go through several different rounds until you reach the world finals. And then whoever's the best speaker, hopefully wins. 
and they're crowned the world champion uh, that year. So I'm in the competition this year. I've got past the first two stages. The next stage is this uh, Saturday. So yeah, fingers crossed. If I win that, that'll mean I'm the best in Scotland and I go on to compete in UK and Ireland. So yes, that's uh, there is an Olympics. There's an Olympics for everything, Darren. <laughs> Fantastic. And I don't know whether, you know, the guys can follow you, the listeners can follow you, but we'll drop that. We'll get that link from you and maybe drop it in the show notes if it's something we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there'll be um, there'll be recordings for sure, I would imagine. There'll be recordings. So, yeah, get that in the, the show notes for sure. I love, I love how you mentioned confidence by design, because even I mentioned this previously that we talked around school. So confidence in design. So we, we work, Darren and I have both support MCR pathways and mentor school people. And a lot of mm. that comes from confidence around themselves and their self-esteem. So, I mean, one thing that isn't taught in school is around confidence in speaking and public speaking. And yeah. I guess, I mean, you've touched upon that about yourself and how people in, have looked at your Facebook group. They'd say that, no, I mean, Kyle would never be a public speaker, but then looking at you now, I mean, do you think there's, a, I mean, there's an opportunity there for people to do that in education to help people become more confident? And Because they teach the business basics and maybe if you want to go and set up a business or if you want to get a bank account, but they don't talk about how to handle yourself. I mean, the career path you might choose and how, you, how your demeanour impacts your opportunities as well. Yeah, I think there'd be a tremendous opportunity to help a lot of people by including public speaking, you know, because if you can speak in front of a large group, then going to a networking event isn't that bad. Bringing it back down to school, speaking at assembly isn't that bad. Speaking in front of your class isn't that bad. Talking to people you're not, you don't know isn't that bad. It's almost like public speaking is the scariest form of communication and everything under that as a result becomes easier. So I think there would be a tremendous opportunity to do that in schools. It would have helped me a lot. And part of the reason I've called my business Confidence by Design is because this is about confidence at the end of the day. You know, it, public speaking is the mechanism for sure, but it's about confidence in you and being yourself when you're up there. So, yeah, I really do hope they bring that into schools. The challenge is there's not a lot of people who are great at public speaking to teach it in schools. That's part of the challenge, but even just giving the pupils a space to practice would be brilliant. I think a couple of like real key messages, and I think confidence by design kind of sums it up for me, but going back to this piece on, I'm not a natural public speaker, I might not have anything of worth to say. Well, everyone has something of worth to say, and yeah. it's about the fact of the responsibility around to get confident, you need to design it. So yeah. it is up, it, you know, if it's, if it's going to be, it's down to me. So I think giving the, even that as a message to our young people about their own confidence and building confidence in whatever skills is just such an important message as well. There's a real responsibility to build that confidence and create it. Yeah, well, look, at the end of the day, we all have stuff which happens to us, some worse than others. But it is up to us to deal with that and to decide what we're going to do moving forward. You know, are we going to allow our, our struggles to hold us back or are we going to use them as fuel to propel us forward? That's the ultimate decision we all have to make. And that is the decision which will help you forge your confidence. It's up to you at the end of the day. And I guess I guess that takes us nicely into an idea around what tips can you give people just now that they can try and implement in their own business, for example, that they could actually become more confident public speaking? Because given that we're in a virtual world just now and that everyone's either on Zoom calls or Teams calls, whatever else, they've then got to bring themselves to the forefront of their business or even in their organisation to show that they are a leader of some sort as well and to be confident. And some people who have never been in front of a camera, that is probably the worst thing in the world for them to be in front of just now and to yeah. get thrust in that spotlight. What tips and tools could you probably recommend to give people? Yeah, sure, sure. So I'm a big proponent of, you know, helping people become confident through competence. So teaching them the skills and so forth that they can use. I think something which will hugely help is if you change your relationship with the camera, right? So a lot of people view the camera as a, a clunky piece of kit and human, but if you can give the camera a human quality, you know, if you can see the camera as your work colleagues or as your friends or someone that you're comfortable with, that will change how you communicate with the device as a result. So from a mindset point of view, that's a tip. We want to be make, making sure we're looking directly at the camera, not the screen. That's an obvious one. Also trying to keep the window as, as active as possible. If I become a talking head, 
this podcast becomes less interesting. If I keep it active, I keep it dynamic. If I'm changing things about, then it's a lot more interesting too. And just the simple basics as well. Smile a little bit, be upright, be straight. If you change your body language, your physiology, that's going to change how you feel as well as a result. So those little things can make a difference. What I'll end on is this. If you really want to upgrade your skill set, get comfortable with recording yourself and then watching it back. Because then you start to see things from the audience's perspective. You notice the little M's, the ums, the things you might be doing wrong and the things you want to change. And then you can make those changes as a result. So there's lots of things you can do to become more confident in the virtual era. Yeah, and there's, there's something in there when you started speaking, I was like, you're going to mention this, but this looking at the camera, as soon as we've been on, my eye kind of, as you can see, anyone watching this on YouTube, Kyle, you're down at the bottom. So I'm kind of trying to interact with you and make eye contact with your picture, but actually your eye contact needs to be <laughs> there. So something you mentioned to me before was, and it's, it's fallen off here, but I put a wee smiley face just next to the camera, like a wee dot, yeah. a wee post-it dot thing. And uh -huh. it just means that I'm attracting my eye more to that when I'm on a call with someone, whether it's a client or it's a meeting, I'm networking or a podcast like this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's definitely just small tips like that that kind of help to train your eye back up there just because naturally our eyes will be drawn to the image on the screen. Yeah, a little prop. A little prop makes a, a great difference, whether it be a smiley face. I know some people like to be a bit more direct and just say on their, no on their note, look here, you know, with an explicit. <laughs> yeah. um, I've seen other people put a picture behind their camera of like friends, family, <laughs> of their favorite celebrity. And um, one lady had a picture of Gerard Butler behind her camera, topless. Wow. You know, it's it's entirely optional what you do, but the main thing is to make friends with I bet you she was smiling all the way through that. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe, 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 that's why I'm laughing. I'm laughing because I'm thinking of that Tom, the Tom Hanks film, Castaway, where he has Wilson the Bull. Do you remember that? Have you ever seen that bit? I haven't got, seen that one. Have you not? So, so he's got this, he's basically stuck in a desert island himself and he finds this ball and he gives it a name and that becomes his friend. So it's like giving your camera a name and so it's got a persona. I love right. that concept. So it changes that relationship and that dynamic. That's fantastic yeah. as well. Yeah, because naturally we're used to communicating with human beings, not cameras. So we can flip that around then we can have more positive effects. There's something in that as well. You mentioned the last thing there around look at yourself back recording. Everyone hates that. Everyone, like, when we started this podcast, I hate listening to it back. I'll be honest with you. I edit it, so I do have to listen and I do have to look. <laughs> so, but I think you're absolutely right with that. But I think there's a real message in there if you go back earlier on in the, this podcast, where Kyle's talking about, and you go and look at his earlier work, you'll notice that you didn't come out of university. You didn't come out of a a few weeks or a few months focused as a, a public speaking expert and then just stop, right? And that wasn't the point where you started doing videos. You've curated and sculpted and created this confidence by the design. You've, you've been focused about doing that. And I think, so wherever you are, I guess, there's a message about start where you are, but be purposeful about how you go about that and yeah. be open to the fact that, look, you're probably not going to get it right and that's okay. But if you don't start then you can't improve you've not got a place to improve upon so um yeah just kind of almost being light or holding it lightly that just start where you are and go from there but be open enough to be able to reflect back on it yeah and be deliberate about your development that's the the key thing at the end of the day and you're right you're going to get things wrong but be open to making these mistakes if you got it all right first time like that's not even good because where, you, where have you got to go now? You know, you're kind of ruining the journey for yourself. So it's good to make mistakes because then you can see how far you go. So yeah, we all start somewhere, like you say, Darren. And that, that's what I'd say as well. I mean, I joined one of your pilot sessions, the, mm. the pitch, 60 second pitch session, which was fantastic because you're talking about learning by your mistakes, but that group session, it was like group therapy where you can put your ideas forward. You walked people through the bite-sized chunks about how to take your kind of pitch statement and then you give people the opportunity to do the pitch in the next session, which was fantastic. And I was nervous as hell. I was number six. <laughs> there was five people before me, but everyone is learning as they go as well. And everyone and you gave people, everyone was giving each other feedback as well. So it was this kind of lovely, organic kind of learning experience that everyone grew from yeah. as well. And I think that was really interesting from that kind of membership kind of concept that you talk around where it's not just a one-to-one, -one, it's actually learning off each other as well. So like you've got mini coaches around you all supporting you. And I thought that was fantastic and really looking forward to that as part of the sessions as well. Yeah, yeah. It's a really good dynamic to do the educational first, learn the information, 
and then the practical to doing. And that's part of overcoming the fear, by the way. And um, when it comes to the fear of public speaking, there's three things you got to really overcome. You've got to overcome this, your mind, whatever's going on in here, whether it be imposter syndrome, being afraid of what people think, you need to figure that out. Then you've got to learn the skills, right? You've got to know exactly how to speak. That will make you feel more confident. And then lastly, you've got to do it. You've got to have the practice. So yeah, the group is, is really fulfilling at least two of those. And we're going to even tap into the third one soon as well. But it's not just um, you guys who learn, Chris. It's me as well. You know, I take yep. inspiration from what you're doing. And this is the thing. If you want to develop your speaking, watch great speakers. Because you can take little things from them and add them to your own game. See what works, see what doesn't work, and refine it further from there. So if you're not watching people, if you're not making yourself open to different styles, different viewpoints, it's hard for you to develop and grow as well. On that note then, is there anyone that you look at as an aspirational point of view that you look at and think they're a great public, public speaker that either we know of or don't know of, that our listeners could even look at as well? Sure. So in my opinion, the greatest speaker of all time is Les Brown. I don't know if you've heard of him. No, no yeah. Yeah, um, Les Brown. Has... Big, yeah. Big sales, motivation, personal development. Yeah, love his stuff. Motivational speaker. He peaked probably around the 80s, maybe late 80s, but incredible. Our, our sheer force of nature. He helped me a lot, actually, when I was in school. And um, this is something we didn't speak about. When I was having those, those struggles, feeling quite down about myself, I sort of wandered onto YouTube and started watching his videos. So maybe I'm a wee bit biased, but I just think the way he holds, there's a video of him, right? Speaking in front of 80,000 people, people in the Millennium Dome. And he's just got all of them listening to every word he says. It's truly incredible what he, he accomplished and what he, he's still doing. He's still alive and he's still going. Yeah. Um, incredible speaker. So he's definitely one to watch out for, I would say. In terms of more recently, it's really good to watch some of the world champions of public speaking as well, actually. There's one in 2015 called Mohammed Katarni. He's a guy from the Middle East, and he's doing a speech about the power of words. And it's great to see how he's bringing humor in to a serious topic. And that's a beautiful combination you can create in your own presentations. So there's lots of different speakers out there that you can check out. But the important thing is you are searching for them. Another one quickly, um, a TED talk by a guy called, um, oh, what's his name? Michael. It's about finding the funny anyway. That's what it was not called finding the funny, but it's about humor. Um, I can't quite remember the second name. I'll get it to you later on, but superb talk. And he had a really interesting idea about humor. He's a comic himself. He said, instead of trying to get a laugh, give people an opportunity, like give people an opportunity to laugh. So really interesting stuff there, which people could check out. You've obviously got your own videos as well, which has been fantastic, which I had a quick look at the different types of videos. You mentioned fun as well. You've got a video on there about have fun with the camera, have fun with what you're talking about. Because yeah. if you're not having fun, then people won't resonate with it or communicate back with it as well. So it's got to be that. So there's great video tips out there, which is fantastic. I'm definitely checking out Les Brown and a few of them. I, find that, I think that's fantastic. Yeah, we'll get, I think we'll drop a few in the show notes, Kyle. So any any yeah. that you think, whether it's from, from Les, the Mohammed Katarni one or the they find the funny. I will we'll, we'll look to drop them in the show notes as well. So you can yeah. go and have a link and anything that you're doing as well. So we mentioned fear. There was one that Chris mentioned there around bringing fun into it as well. So yeah. I, I think all of these things, you're someone who's very competent at it, has worked at it for a number of years and still you're looking at people that you can learn from and you're learning yeah. from the people you teach as well and kind yes. of support in that. So if there's anything that I'd want my listeners to, to kind of take from it is you can always be improving. There's always worth in terms of what you've got to say. And you are the variable. You know, no one's going to, even the same words are going to be said this a different way and you're going to be, be able to deliver them in a different way. So um, never think that you've got nothing of worth to be able to say or it's been said before because you are the variable. It will be unique. 100%, 100%. You've got a message, you've got a story, you've got value to give. It's just about finding out what that is and giving yourself the opportunity to speak about it by running towards these, these public speaking occasions. So yeah, beautifully said, Darren. 
and obviously we talk around the obviously the podcast is called Purpose Over Profit, mm. and, I, and I think we've kind of covered off some of this as well because you've talked about your passion and basically how there was zero money coming in the in the bank at that month, but you're working at it and working at it and working at it. Even back to the early days where you stood up and went to the pub in that Glasgow session, the zombie apocalypse. And I'm amazed you didn't say I'll be out on Saturday nights and it's kind of mostly a zombie apocalypse, most most <laughs> of Saturday nights in Glasgow to be fair. Uh, but yes, yeah, so, I mean, how do you see it? Do you see it purpose over profit? Do you need both or how do you see it? For me, you've got the title right for your podcast, Purpose Over Profit. That's kind of, I mean, I would do this for free. And that's kind of what helped me get through those those early stages when I really was struggling in the, the world of business. I just think if you're if you're focusing on the money, you're going to stop. You're going to find a way to quit. But if it's about the, the purpose, if it's about the passion, if it's about the development, if it's about you just trying to get better each day, that's going to keep you going way over any financial award, in my opinion. What a fantastic end to the podcast. I think that is... Um... You know, more more than anything, obviously, we love people that agree with us as well, Kyle. But um, <laughs> it's 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 great it's it's great to hear that we're obviously definite advocates of purpose over profit. Obviously, we all need some element of profit and money, but um, but yeah, the fact that you're saying you know you would do this for free, I think trying enough things in life to be able to get to that point where you know what you could do for free and that you enjoy to do for free. It's fantastic. There's always ways to monetize it, but that's certainly where where we come from as well. So it's been fantastic uh, having you on on the podcast. Before you go, though, um, I know you've got some exciting things in the pipeline. You've got your book behind you that you'll be able to see if you're watching this on YouTube. Chris mentioned your membership uh, platform as well that I know you're, you're running just now. Can you tell the guys just a bit about what you're working on at the moment and how they can, I guess, reach you? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So yeah, the book is on Amazon. If anyone is interested in it, it's called The Five Pillars of Effective Public Speaking. You can get it in ebook, audiobook and paperback. All the books are there um, if you want them. It's had about five stars so far on Amazon. I have over 30 reviews. So yeah, check it out if that's of interest. With the, the membership group, this is a big focus right now. I'm creating a new morning group. And basically the idea is that we meet up two times a month. First session is about learning a new skill in public speaking. Second session is an opportunity to practice those new skills. So if you're interested in that, you can reach me on LinkedIn. Just type in Kyle Murter. There's not a lot of murters out there, so you should be able to find me. Um, or you can reach me on my website, confidencebydesign.co.uk. And on that note, Kyle, good luck with the, that, the ambition of being the world champion one day. I'm sure we're going to see that happen. Thank you. Positive Thank mindset you. and uh, good luck with the Scottish uh, public speaking championships as well which is coming up. So I uh, look forward to speak to you again and thank you again for having you on the podcast. My pleasure, guys. Thank you for having me. Great podcast. Really looking forward to uh, maybe coming back again one day and, and doing maybe a recap a year later. Who knows? Yeah, that'd be fantastic, Kyle. Thanks so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. As always, thank you so much for listening to the Pop Pod this week. If you'd like to leave a review or share the podcast with others, then that'd be awesome. You'll find us on Instagram at The Pop Pod, and on Facebook we have a community group called Purpose to Progress, anyone can join. And we'll be back every Monday with a new episode, but until then, stay on purpose, and we'll see you next week.